What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Damian Cryer. I hope each and every one of you guys is having a wonderful, amazing Sunday. Well, guys, I'm doing just fine. I can't complain. As I always say, it wouldn't do any good if I did complain. Complaining gets you nowhere, especially if you're not doing anything about it but complaining. So I complain. Anyway, um, looking at the comments in the last video I posted, and even though the last video I posted, it was about karma. And I think I did a cooking vlog with that. I've had multiple comments about doing a vlog on relationships. Wow, I'm honored. But at the same time, you know, um, I don't know, man. I don't know. The relationship thing to me is kind of tricky when it comes to giving people advice about um, relationships. Um, it's kind of tricky because everybody's situation is different. I think my camera's in too far. That's better. Everybody's uh, situation is different when it comes to a relationship. Now, I've had people to ask me what's the best way to start a relationship um again you know i'm not a professional when it comes to this um i don't have a doctorate or associate's degree or major or anything like that in relationships it's obvious that i am not i well i won't say i'm not in a relationship but um i will say I wasn't in a relationship um, for a while because obviously, I don't know. Um, I guess the point that I'm getting at is it's hard for me to give somebody a relationship advice when my, mel when my marriage had failed. But I can only give you advice based on my life's experience. And I always say that when I do a video like this because, you know, I don't want to run off half cocked and start throwing people advice and telling them what they should and shouldn't do and somebody look back and say well wait a minute who are you to give advice you know uh your relationship didn't work too well back then well um and my answer would be to them if they ask me a question like that some things aren't meant to be people do change people have a right to change you know um it's not a perfect world i always say that it's not a perfect world people have a right to change and that's all that really needs to be said now my thing is starting off a relationship for me um was kind of hard at first because i had to look at multiple factors i have to look at things like do i have time for a relationship because of the hours that i work the shift that i work um a lot of people coming into renew, new new relationships, you know, say for instance, if you're on the day shift where you work um, like early in the morning to the um, uh, early afternoon hours, or you work the late afternoon hours into the late evening hours, and your partner works the opposite hours, those could kind of hinder on a relationship. Um, people say that distance makes the heart grow fonder. That's true in some instances but not in all instances. Um, so I think that if you guys are working on the same schedule, um, it could be a good thing, but it can be a bad thing. Um, one thing that I noticed is couples, when they fall in love with each other, they like to do everything together. They'll live together, they go to the store together, they go to the park together, they go for walks together. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. But sometimes if you're around each other too much, you could actually smother one another. Basically, the last thing that y'all want to do is y'all do not want to get a job together at the same place where y'all work the same hours. Because what's going to happen is y'all going to smother each other out. Y'all going to smother each other out. Because, you know, yes, love is good. It's good to have love and be in a relationship but if y'all around each other too much, you're going to smother each other out because you guys don't have anything to talk about. I mean, think about it. If you guys go to work together, y'all work the same job, 
and y'all see the same thing, y'all see the same people, y'all experience the same day together. Listen to that word I just said. If y'all experience the same exact day together, y'all have nothing to talk about. What do you have to tell your significant other when you get off work? She or he already knows how your day was, whether you had a good day, a bad day, a busy day, a not so busy day, a productive day, a not so productive day, because you're around each other. That means you'll have nothing to talk about. And if y'all do stuff like that, eventually one day that relationship's going to end very fast because you're gonna find yourself sitting at home one day on the edge of the bed, watching television together, and y'all won't have nothing to talk about. Y'all be sitting there watching a movie and literally don't have nothing, nothing to talk about. Have you literally been in a relationship before where y'all around each other so much that y'all be sitting there in front of each other trying to think of what to say next? Come on, I mean seriously, seriously, leave me a comment. Because I've done it before, I have done it. I have been in relationships where I've actually, when me and my partner got together, we actually sat there at the kitchen table, dinner table, whatever you want to call it, and eating dinner or whatever, and you know, had nothing to talk about. We literally sit there and think of stuff to talk about. So you know what we do? We pull our devices out and we start playing on our phones and read messages, texting people randomly that we don't even freaking text anymore. That's because you're around each other too much. So my advice, if you start a relationship, try not to smother each other out because that will end the relationship. Y'all wanna do things together but y'all don't wanna do everything together. And if y'all got to be around each other that much, it clearly shows a sign of someone is insecure. Someone is insecure in their relationship because there is no way. If you're in a relationship, you can't go to the restroom by yourself. You can't take a shower by yourself. You can't go to the store by yourself. You can't run to the gas station by yourself. You can't do anything by yourself without your significant other right there. That is a serious issue. Some people say that that's love. No, that's not love. That is insecurity. That is a serious problem. What y'all want to do is try to do different things apart to bring y'all closer. What I mean, if your girl think that you're going to go over your friend's house and you're gonna be with your buddies all night long and late and come home late. Obviously in her mind, she's gonna instantly have an attitude. And this is vice versa. This is not just women, men too. Go hang out for a little bit. Come home a lot earlier than he or she expects you to. Surprise them. Because what happens is we get in these relationships and we fall in love. We spend all of our time together, all of our time. We call that the honeymoon effect. A new relationship is like a dream come true. A new relationship is called the honeymoon effect. What ends up happening is, I'm sorry, I got somebody wanting to talk. Sorry about that guys, I'm up here at one of the local parks and they got like this big bike riding event going on this weekend. The guy walked up my SUV similar to somebody else's SUV that they're waiting on, but it wasn't me. Anyway, what I was saying was that, so what happens Oh, I hope I remember where I was at. What happens is when you, in that relationship, a brand new, fresh relationship, I want y'all to sit back for a second. And those of you who know what I'm talking about, y'all been in love before, y'all can concur exactly with what I'm finna say. When you get into a brand new relationship, it's like a dream. It's like something that, that you never knew existed. It's like something that you never ever in your wildest imagination would ever thought that would happen to you. I would never have this feeling. Oh my God, the love, his love, her love is so passionate, it's so good. Oh my God, you're bragging at work. You're doing things that you don't normally do. You're wearing earrings to work. You're wearing makeup. You're dressing different. He's shaving a lot more now. And he's in the mirror a lot more. He's keeping his hair cut. He's doing this, dressing, you know, new shoes and this and that. And, you know, everybody's bragging about this love. And y'all look inseparable. I mean, y'all just like on this cloud. Y'all got all these posts that y'all posting together. Y'all know what I'm talking about, man. Don't act like you don't. Y'all doing everything together. Everything. 
passionate kisses and then after a few months go by all of a sudden the passionate kisses stop it's just a peck on the cheek have a nice day i'll see you tonight so all of a sudden the honeymoon effect starts to come down y'all not doing everything together anymore things start to change you start to notice attitude differences you starting to notice staying gone late you starting to notice um things are your your honeymoon effect is starting to become a regular relationship now when it gets to that point it's not saying that things is going bad in your relationship it doesn't spell the word cheating in your relationship. It just means now that the honeymoon effect is over, y'all need to start doing things differently that's going to keep y'all together instead of keeping y'all apart. Meaning that y'all will no longer probably be doing everything together. And um, that's why you want to be careful when you post stuff about a new relationship. You want to make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. You don't wanna jump off into something half cocked and not really know what's going on 100%. However, you can maintain a long relationship, extremely long relationship, but you have to do stuff the right way. Men, if you're the type of man that just wants to go to work and come home and smother your woman all day, not a smart thing to do. Because while you're doing that, she's on the phone with her girlfriends. Her girlfriends is telling her, yeah, girl, my man, he took the kids to the gym. They're at the YMCA. They're at the park playing basketball. They're out fishing. They're out yada yada doing this and doing that. And you're sitting there smother. Do something with her. Take her somewhere. You know, don't always think because the honeymoon effect of a relationship is over with that the relationship cannot continue to progress and continue to go. You have to do things different. You know, if the sex is different, do something different to spice the sex up. It's, it's, it's just like when you're cooking food. If the meat don't have enough seasoning in it, what you gonna do? You're gonna do something to make it taste better. You're gonna add more to it. The same with a relationship. A relationship is not something that you start and stop. It is a continuous, long relationship that, want, that, that is going to have to have a lot of work involved in it. You know, communicating is going to be the first thing the worst thing that you ever want to do in a relationship is start off a relationship and then stop communicating. You don't you do not want to bring trust into a relationship. You want to make when I say trust, I mean trust issues. Hold on, I think these people still think that I'm somebody else. I don't know. Maybe I should move my SUV or something. This is a park. I thought it was a park. Everybody's looking at me like uh, I shouldn't be sitting here or something. Hmm. Last time I checked, it was a public park. Am I not supposed to be sitting at a public park vlogging on my camera talking to my subscribers? I mean, this is like the third person. She's literally on the side of my vehicle looking at me while I'm talking to the camera. Oh, she just walked away. Anyway. Okay. I guess she must be with the other person who thought I was somebody else, which I'm clearly not nobody else. I'm Damien Cryer. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so relationships is something that you have to continue to work on. If you guys were going out to eat in the beginning, you need to continue going out eating. Don't just stop. If you guys were going out once a week eating, keep that as a tradition in your relationship. Don't stop doing stuff like that. That is, I'm telling you. That's the worst thing that you can do. I was married for 13 plus years. I started off sending my ex-wife flowers to her job on her birthday, on Mother's Day. I continued to do it the whole entire 13 years. You don't never stop what you were doing. People change, but the things that you do for people don't have to change. Just because a person is nasty and snobby to you, don't mean that you gotta change and you know be nasty and snobby to them. Keep treating them nice. You just have to do it from a distance. Basically, if a person is acting like that, they don't want to be bothered with you, they don't want you around, you can still be nice to that person. Be nice from a distance though. You know, you don't always have to make your presence known. But back to the relationship thing. You know, one thing that you do not want to do in a relationship 
no matter how much you you know make mistakes don't bring lies and distrust into a relationship because now not only do you have to not only is the honeymoon effect over with and now you got to do what you can to keep the relationship strong because people are looking at y'all saying wow i want to be like them last thing you want to do is bring distrust into relationship because now the honeymoon effect is over your job is going to be challenging now don't make it more challenging by distrust issues cheating is the number one thing that can destroy a relationship cheating will it break y'all up no it doesn't a lot of people watching this video know i'm telling the truth somebody cheat it won't break y'all up it's going to destroy the relationship but y'all going to continue messing around because you're hurt you are hurt and you're going to feel like that you have something to prove whether it's to the man or to the woman that he's cheated with you on or to the woman and the man that she cheated with you with on something like that blah, blah, blah. my tongue twisted up again so all i'm saying man you know i'm not a professional when it comes to this relationship issue but all i can do is just tell you guys from experience um you know and the comments that i received it you know it didn't ask me specifically about the vlog on relationships it didn't specifically ask me what topic to chime in on on the relationship issue so um, if I had a little bit more specific details of what you were talking about as far as the um, relationship issue goes, I will be able to better give you that advice that you need. So right now, I don't know if you're starting a new relationship or you coming out of a relationship, um, you know, or whatever that it is. But I think if you're ending a relationship, don't be too quick to tell the whole world that y'all breaking up. You know, I, man, I'm gonna tell y'all something, man. And a lot of y'all can agree with me. I'll be on Facebook. You know what? I'm so sick of Facebook, man. I'm so sick of Facebook. When I go to Facebook, man, I'm not gonna say everybody, but 80% of people on Facebook is just crying, man. I mean, seriously. People are on there literally crying. I don't know if they're doing it for a like or somebody feels sorry for them, but there are some things that's not for fucking social media. I mean, literally, it's not for social media. I mean, I'm on Facebook, right? And I'm looking at statuses. People are on, there's a guy on there talking about, oh, F my wife, the hell with my wife, she cheated on me, she ain't shit, blah, blah, this and that. Oh, she's wrong. And then there's comments in the bottom up under this comment where somebody from her side of the family saying, we gonna fuck you up and we gonna do this and do that. And you know, then the next day, oh yeah, you know, I'm gonna be on your top when I see you, blah, blah, blah. F you and your family, F all of y'all, y'all ain't nothing, blah, blah. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna, and I'm like, and then the next day, the very next day, there is a post status on YouTube from the same individual talking about my wife is my day one. I love my baby so well. I mean, so much. She's the world to me. And I'm looking at this post like you freaking idiot. Why would you post all that nasty stuff on Facebook about what's going on in you and your wife's personal life? for the whole world to hear and then not one but two days later when the smoke clears oh she's my day one and guess what i was on facebook last night and i looked in this same individual same individual was right back on facebook again last night dogging his wife out talking about how many men she messed with in the marriage since they've been married how she's nothing how she's an unfit mother why would you want to do something like that that's what i say don't drag all of your dirt from your personal life to facebook facebook is supposed to be a platform for people to be able to connect with people that they haven't seen in years you know i was born June 10th, 1970. It makes me 48 years old. When I was growing up, we didn't have this type of social media. We didn't have these cell phones. We didn't have these Apple computers. We didn't have these watches like this. We didn't have all this fancy stuff. 
So we had no way to reach out to people that we hadn't seen in years. And you know, you, you guys know the story. As you get older, people grow apart. It's not that y'all don't care about each other. When you get older, you meet somebody, you fall in love, y'all get a place together, you move on, you focus on them, and then comes the bills. Now you focus on your bills and your new relationship, your new home. Now you feel like the man, you feel like the woman, you feel like that you're moving on with your life and doing real adult shit. That's what it's all about. Okay, so the last thing you want to do is drag your life on social media. There's nothing wrong with venting but vent in the right way. Don't sit there and say the name of the person in your status. So the whole entire world who's watching it can know that you're dogging out your wife or husband. Men cheat too. It's not just women. Men, we cheat too. We've all done it. We're all guilty of it. So quit trying to bash your wives, putting their name on social media. That's bull. That, you know, think about it for a second. When people get married, you get married because you're in love, you're happy. People even get married that's not happy. There is couples out there in the universe and you people watching, some of you might be some of the people. Y'all still get married even though y'all know that the relationship was toxic. Because y'all feel this certain bond with each other. Y'all feel a certain bond to be with each other. Y'all feel it. This, I mean, I'm not gonna marry somebody that I'm not happy with the hell with that. You know, I'm not gonna marry somebody that's insecure who has insecurities. You see the red flags in the very, very beginning. The flags are there. You just have to be able to see it. You got people out there in relationships who know their relationship is toxic, but well, are they willing to move on? Nope, they'd rather stay in a relationship because they love that person so much, they willing to deal with the toxic relationship. They're willing to deal with the insecurities they're willing to deal with the fact that they know their significant other is cheating. They're willing to stay in a relationship. It's either one or two things because they love the person that much or they don't want to be alone. I've actually been in a situation. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm sorry. I won't say been in a situation. I've actually witnessed with my own eyeballs a situation where a young lady was dealing with this guy okay the guy still dealing with the ex okay facts this is this is this is proven facts the guy still dealing with his ex but he's got his new woman his ex sent video footage of them two together doing the unthinkable right there on video sent it to the new woman you know what the new woman said oh well it is what it is still with him to this day a week later the ex, uh, how, how, did, how did the story go? The ex popped up at her house, showed her the, the phone video of her and him the night before, him doing all kind of explicit stuff to her on video. You know what she said? It is what it is. Basically the point that I'm getting at is we as people, we accept what we want to accept to have what we want. But sometime what you want is definitely not what you're gonna get. <laughs> Cause you know you heard that saying before. Watch what you ask for. You knock at the devil's door long enough. One day he might ask her. That's true, man. All I'm saying is you have to find what works for you. If you want to stay in a toxic relationship and you want to continue to be in that relationship that you know that there's some foul stuff going on, then you're creating and accepting an uncomfortable future for yourself. You know, don't wait 20 years down the line to make your decision, you know, and you end up being old like me, older like me, and you look back on those 20 years and say, wow, you know, if I would have left 20 years ago, I'd still be, you know, young and still out there. You know, as we get older, man, we cannot afford to take losses. We can't afford to take losses as we get older. So when you start seeing the signs of all the red flags right there, you need to execute a plan for them right now. My battery. Okay, guys, I got my battery back charged up. You need to start executing a plan. Um, um, what I call it, I call it an exit strategy. You need to start executing an exit strategy.
for those people who's going through a really bad relationship, a toxic relationship, you need to know that there is life out here, man. After that relationship ends, the conclusion is done, there's a new life out here for you, man. There is a whole new life. God did not just create one woman and he did not create just one man. God created somebody for everybody. So when you are ready to execute a strategy plan to exit that toxic relationship, you really need to do some brainstorming. A lot of women won't leave a man that they know that's cheating on it because she got two or three kids by. The hell with that. The hell with that. Seek assistance where you need to seek assistance at. Become dependent, independent on yourself. Not dependent, become independent. You know, quit thinking that you can't move forward because you got kids by this person. Because this person can do this, this person can do that. You know, if you're happy with stressing every day, if you're happy with staying where you're at every day, if you're happy knowing that you've been manipulated and cheated on every day, if you're happy knowing that you have someone in your life that's unfaithful to you, then I guess you're happy with that. And that's where you're gonna be. You know, you're gonna just be stuck. And believe me, people on the outside, they're looking in, they're seeing it. They're seeing it. They're looking at you just shaking their damn head. They really are because those are the people that, that you probably turned against who tried to warn you and tried to tell you, you probably turned against those people. You probably don't speak to them anymore. You probably changed your social media, uh, your contact information because you don't want them people to contact you. It's not that they did anything wrong. It's, before, it's the simple fact that you don't want to hear the truth. You don't want to hear people who really care about you tell you the truth because it hurts. The truth hurts. Now, if you are planning on moving forward, with your life and starting something different you need to take some notes man start making plans reach out to your local agencies to help you and your kids out hey i grew up on food stamps so it ain't no damn shame in my game i grew up on the program i'm not ashamed my mom had six kids you know so you know no dad so she did what she had to do to take care of us and she did a damn good job from what i'm looking at and what me and my brothers and sisters are looking at she did a damn good job so if you upon uh, um a woman with kids by a man and you feel like that you can't move on because you looking at this man like he's God first of all you need to be searching up that way for God not this way because God you ain't gonna find God in him uh oh I think my vehicles been sitting idle too long my thing is this right here you know uh know that there's agencies out there that'll help you out get on your feet get you proper housing that you need so that you can escape this toxic relationship you know you need to flip the table you need to flip the script let this individual or individuals know that you mean business and sometimes if that means cutting certain people off to be able to move on do it that means if you need to get certain people out of your ear from being in your ear constantly you need to do that do what you got to do that's going to make life better for you because if you don't start to change within yourself nobody else will you're going to grow old you're going to be dealing with this person while this person is dealing with multiple people and you know about it you know what i'm saying a man's going to only allow what you allow a man to do if you allow me to sleep with these women now I'm, hey, hey i want to make this very clear i'm not talking about me i'm good i'm already taken so if you allow men to be with multiple women, you think they're gonna stop? If you allowed it to happen, who are you to tell them to stop it when you've been allowing it to go on? Why would you have fixed a, fix your mouth to tell this person, I want you to stop cheating on me, stop dealing with all these multiple women when you've been allowing it to go on? Which you should have did the first time. You know, he's doing what you allowed him to do. And yes, it's your fault. I'm not saying it's your fault why he's cheating now. I mean, why he cheated on you in, 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 in the uh, beginning, but I blame you for why he's cheating now. Because if you would have made a statement the very first time, he would have never done it again. You can put the, one thing I've always said about a, a, a woman, a woman can predict a man, but a man just cannot predict a woman. And I stand behind that 100%. A woman can predict a man, but a man cannot predict a woman. 
A lot of people out there may disagree, but the real ones, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know I'm right. All I'm saying, a man is only going to allow you to do, the man is going to, the man is going to do what you allow him to do. If you allowed him to get away with it the first time, you put him out the house for a day or two and let him come on back like nothing happened, that's your fault. That's your fault. Because if you would have put your foot down in the beginning when he did it the first time, put his ass out. Make him wait three or four months. But no, you showed him that you needed him. You let him know, it's okay. It's fine. You made a mistake. Come on back home. I can't live without you. I can't make it. You're my God. You're my Jesus. That's the message that you sent that person. That's why they're doing what they're doing. And that's why they're going to continue to do what they do. If you stop it in the beginning, basically stop it right in its tracks. Stop it right in its tracks. Right as it happens, you stop it. You put your foot down. You put his ass out. You let him know that you mean business. Okay, guys. I think I'm going to get ready to end this video off real quick. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching this video, joining me. And guys, listen, if you have a video that you want me to do as far as advice or story time on one of my YouTube videos, um, when you do leave a comment, you know, it, it kind of helps me better answer you without saying your name. And I will never do that unless you gave me permission to do it. Um, you need to be more specific in the video comment section when you want me to um, do an upload for you or do an upload about your current situation or about a situation that you're concerned about. So you don't have to go into details. Like somebody asked me to do, somebody in the comment section asked me to do this video right here that I'm doing right now for you guys. But they asked me, Damien, can you do a vlog on relationships? So I did this vlog today on relationships, but it didn't ask me specifically about uh, what the vlog about. So I just did one today to let you know that I heard you. I didn't just hit the like button and the little heart button. I'm letting you know that I hear you, I heard you, but I need more specifics. So next time we need to start, well, I ain't gonna say we need to start, but I would like to ask the next time when you leave a comment, if you can give me more specific specifics as far as you want me to do a vlog on relationships as far as if somebody's cheating on you or you want me to do a vlog for you on relationships as far as how to start a new relationship or you want me to do a vlog on why don't relationships work or why do they work in the beginning but at the end they turn out really really bad so i appreciate you guys who joined me and watching this long video i'm sorry sort of <laughs> i just wanted to touch on starting that relationship, ending that relationship, and um, stuff like that. So I was trying to hit on different key points in a relationship, but if you guys have any comments um, about something that you want me to do, leave me a comment, comment section down below. You guys know my email, black underscore DAC2 at yahoo.com. Hit me up, leave me a message, or if you want to go into details, send me an email. Again, black underscore DAC2 at yahoo.com. That way, nobody sees the comment but me. In the email, obviously, I'm the only one with access to my email. So, um, again, guys, I'm Damian Cryer. I love each and every one of you guys, man. Until the next time, um, you guys have a wonderful and blessed day. I love each and every one of you guys. Thank you for subscribing. I'm Damian Cryer, and I'll talk to you in the next vlog. Peace.